Okay, so Rich, I want you to, to imagine something for yeah. me. You are a Hollywood executive. Okay. And famous actor, writer, comedian Dan Aykroyd comes into your office. It's like 1989, okay. 1990. Okay. And he says, have I got the script for you to produce? And you know, you think to yourself, this is the, he. He wrote Spies Like Us, The Blues Brothers, uh, the the Ghostbusters one and two. So, as as a Hollywood executive, what do you do? Well, if I were a Hollywood executive, yeah, I I would have enough sense to be familiar with Dan Aykroyd, and I would say, you have to work with John Landis. <laughs> That, that's the correct answer. <laughs> uh, apparently what they decided to do is give him absolute carte blanche and say, make whatever movie you want to make. And so he made Nothing But Trouble. And it is also called Nothing But Trouble. Hey! <laughs> Let's start off. Let's just, let's, let's just talk about Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. Everybody knows about Dan Aykroyd, but I like talking about Dan Aykroyd. Sure. Dan Aykroyd is a fun and interesting person. He is completely insane. There we go. Yes. <laughs> I agree. I can now agree with you. <laughs> I don't think we will ever have a formal relationship, a formal contact with any alien species out there, especially after 9-11. He is insane in the most fun ways, you know, UFOs and, and, and ghosts. He's a big, he's a big paranormal believer. Um, and also, somewhat famously, his like his, his ideas for like scripts and whatnot are creative, and yet batshit crazy. You always hear about people who work with Dan Aykroyd talking about shit they had to cut out. But Aykroyd wrote the screenplay, but it was huge. It was huge, and he <laughs> delivered it in uh, the San Fernando Valley Yellow Pages, and it was this epic, insane saga of each and every member of the band had their own movie and i said dan you know this the studio sort of was horrified and i said danny but this is too unwieldy you know we have to make it into a, a narrative so danny said you do it and they're full of of just completely unfilmable ideas <laughs> and then and then saner people have to like sift through it and they find those 60 pages and they they turn that into something cohesive and sensible right Nothing But Trouble did not have that voice of reason. Go ahead there, folks. Pick yourself up a couple of dogs. I didn't know originally that Dan Aykroyd directed Nothing But Trouble. And, and, and when I heard that he directed it, the film suddenly started to make a lot more sense to me. Ba based off of a story by his brother. Yeah. He wrote the screenplay and directed and stars in multiple roles. That's not good. No, that's no good. John Candy is in this. Chevy Chase. Demi Moore, fresh off of Ghost, stars in this movie. Yes. But you didn't, you didn't have that experienced director's voice, though. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's wildly creative, Dan Aykroyd. And I gotta say this, it comes through. Oh, his creativity is all over this fucking movie. Uh, Nothing But Trouble is kind of infamous. It's an infamous, terrible movie. Rewatching it? It's, it's, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's weird as fuck. Okay. It, it has value just by virtue of being weird as fuck and interesting. Now, it doesn't necessarily work as a whole. <laughs> it's terrible. But there are so many little elements and, and, and this world building in this movie that I, I love. This crazy mansion that the, uh, the Justice of the Peace lives in, it has more thought put into it than all of Rogue One. Let's be the nursery. The story is Chevy Chase plays some kind of like extremely wealthy financial advisor yep. guy. He, he lives in the, uh, in the penthouse. Yep. And then uh, Demi Moore moves into the penthouse with him and she is also super rich, super successful, and super hot. That's true. 
Let's just say I have a personal interest in this particular deal. So if you're not going, can I borrow your car? <laughs> I'm a good driver. The, the kickoff to the entire plot of the movie is Demi Moore wanting to borrow the car of a man she just met in an elevator. When she's super rich and successful, and why the fuck doesn't she have a car? It's insane, <laughs> Rich Evans. That's the entire kickoff of the movie is, hey, can I borrow your car? No, I'll drive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they end up on their wacky adventure. It, yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense that she wouldn't have a car, but you can look at that, you can, you can look over that, you can gloss over that. I don't know if you can. <laughs> That's what starts the dominoes falling. <laughs> okay, and then they're, they're, they're Brazilian. The wacky, goofy, colorful friends right. tag along. They're not coming with us, are they? So they, they, they start going uh, to Atlantic City, mm -hmm. and they end up uh, yeah, they taking- take a, They take a detour. Oh, crazy smells, he stinks, go, go. Nice town, huh? Vulcanvania is the town they go through. And that's, that name came straight out of Dan Aykroyd's brain. <laughs> and as a name for, for a town, a fictional town where weird things are gonna happen, is it perfect? <laughs> this, this weird ass fucking name for a town, Vulcanvania, they go through the town. Uh -huh. and then you get your first world building uh, element. This town looks like something bad has happened to the town because just like in the middle of the street, there are these just pillars. There are these pillars coming out of the middle of the street with just smoke billowing out of them. Yep. And and like uh, super downtrodden town folk just drinking bottles of booze <laughs> in the middle of the street and everyone's giving the rich people a funny look and uh, Chevy Chase ends up running a stop sign. A goofy stop sign though. Uh, they're going to be pulled over by a police officer, and for no real apparent reason, he tries to outrun the police officer. I love the ga it, the gadgetry in this movie. It establishes the, the beginning of like the gadgetry yeah. and the fact that we are not dealing with ordinary folk. I, I understand the purpose for the movie. I'm saying character None. character story wise, None. there's no reason that he would run from the cops. None. <laughs> and even actually, him running from the co cops ends up having no consequence because the cop never tells the judge about him running from the cops. It's, it's so dumb. There's so there are so many things wrong with this beautiful movie. <laughs> so then we we start our descent into what can only be described as pure madness. Wow. Look at all these toasters. And we meet Dan Aykroyd. As, as the wily old justice of the peace. <laughs> this court herewith binds you over for a further appearance to be held at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We shall deem for the public and common good that you be confined herein. So for now, oh, what are you good night, Harry! This is the most important aspect of that character. Yeah. His nose is a penis. His nose is a penis. Like his nose is flat out a penis. There's no way, there's no way around it. And like, uh -huh. it's more obvious in some scenes than in others. Mm. I think at some point they looked at the dailies mm. and somebody's like, his nose is a penis. That's, you know what? That's a little bit too on the nose. Oh, and you know what? I'm gonna say the exact opposite happened. They yeah. kept looking at the dailies and said, you know, his nose kind of looks like a penis. Let's just make it a penis. <laughs> So you think that those got more penis-like as the as they made the movie? I think that was the joke. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. How amazing is this mansion that the movie takes place in? There's there's all this just crap, all of like books, piles of shit. It's yeah. like obviously it was a nice mansion at some point, and now it has. Since the 1800s, when it was, was built, it has turned into a crazy fun house. More on how they packed me off to Farmers Mechanics University in Gracefield, Ohio, for my engineering degree. <laughs> because the judge has a degree in engineering, which is established pretty early on, and his family is full of mechanics. Yeah. 
And so this how this how this movie was written to be a wacky childhood adventure movie, but it's starring grown-up assholes. And has a penis nose. And has a penis nose. You can take it two ways. With a little bit of tweaking, Yeah. this is a horror movie. <laughs> Ordinary man gets pulled over by the police, taken to jail for what should be just a regular old trap. Well, this is, this is starting off a little bit strange, but I'll, I'll talk to the judge, we'll get this straightened out. And then it just becomes obvious that the government of this town, like the, the judge and everyone working for him is insane. That's a horror movie premise. And see, I, I, like, I like this as a group of kids, you know, needs, needs to like go on, cause, cause like the, the, his whole property, like we're only talking about the mansion. There's so much to this movie. This mansion is in the center of a giant junkyard. Filled that is, with that is built on top of a, a coal mine that is only a coal mine because somebody swindled the judge's family. There's so much in the 19 early 1900s. But but that's why I go childhood adventure, like playing in a junkyard, like exploring a scrapyard, exploring an old mansion with slides and trap doors. This is a Goonies movie. Whoa! This is the kids need to, like, he stole the kid's dog or something and they need to rescue it. And so they go through this, this wacky yeah. house of horrors and he's still the same judge. He still takes off his nose. All of the, the weird horror shit happens, but in, from the viewpoint of a child. So, so you could go Goonies? Yeah. Or you could go Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But we're kind of somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Hopefully that sells everybody on watching this movie <laughs> because that's exactly what it is. Like the bone stripper. This is something that he exists. pulls a lever and there's a trap door. <laughs> and then these people have been pulled over for drunk driving. They get sent to the bone stripper. <laughs> and that's why I go Goonies, because it, it, it's so cartoony. Like, sure. They, they pull in these gangsters but in, in and the they have literally a sack of cocaine. <laughs> But in the Goonies, there isn't a comical machine that strips the flesh off of your bones and then throws the bones out the back into a giant fucking bony. But it is kind of Goonies because it's a roller coaster <laughs> that dumps them to the thing that strips their bones from their flesh. And, and you know, on the other side of that, uh, our heroes of the movie, uh, they don't get their bones stripped out of their body. They get they're on top of a trap door and they fall into a giant pile of rubber duckies. <laughs> yes! Yeah. This, there is so many fantastic things in this movie if you start to really think about it. I love the dinner table. Do you remember the dinner table? <laughs> Apartment slides out, this little model condiment train comes up and starts going around. And they put like disgusting ketchup and mustard on these just disgusting hot dogs. It's, it's like <laughs> body horror when he's eating that hot dog. The judge's chair descends from the ceiling with straps and hooks. Incredibly well thought out mansion, but then they, they forgot to get the story structure right. Because for no particular reason, the colorful Brazilian friends decide that the hot dog train has finally taken it too far for them. Fine. Fine. Come on, baby. You know what the weirdest thing about that is, though? What? They successfully run away. <laughs> Nothing happens to them after that. You don't. They don't like run into the next comical contraption that kills them in some fantastic way. They just leave. Yeah. And then John Candy, one of his two characters, just leaves the movie with them. Yeah. It looks like you need a nice couple of weeks holiday, you know? You peeled the correct banana there. 
That, that's what I'm saying, like, story, structure, characters. The worst garbage shit. Dan Aykroyd. Huh? Dan Aykroyd not re being creative. Right. But not really knowing what he's doing. He has no sense of structure or pacing or, 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 or basic script writing. He is an idea man. You, you don't even get a likable protagonist. No. I, I think, I think one, of the, one of the downfalls of this movie is Chevy Chase. Come on, Chris. Chris! Chris! Chevy Chase is awful. Like, Demi Moore, I know she got nominated for a Razzie, but for what she's given to work with, Demi Moore does a good job. Yeah. Oh, I win my deal. No, 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 no. Bobo wins because Bobo's hand was on top. Yeah, my hand's on top. I win my deal. No, I won my deal. That's right. No, no, it's Bobo's deal because Bobo's hand was on top. She's doing, a, she's doing her best. She's having fun with it. And yeah. then Chevy Chase is on screen, and you just, you just want to fucking kick him in the nuts. In many cases here, I do often choose to invade the maximum levy. Frequently, undesirables are put to death. Oh, sure, I can understand that, Judge, but come on. Death for running a stop sign? And for being a banker, that's the double death. Dan Aykroyd is... I like the Judge character. ...is being appropriately hammy. Uh-huh. Uh, John Candy, unfortunately, is kind of phoning it in. I think he knew... He's trying to play straight man. He's surprisingly, surprisingly good at it for John Candy as the straight laced cop character. I suppose. The tough cop by the book. Yeah. Traffic violation. Contravention of village bylaw 23, failing in the execution of a full stop at a place so marked, I recommend fine bond and release. <laughs> what else you want to do for him? Bake him a pie? Oh. I guess. It's not something you would expect to see John Candy doing necessarily. But then he also, John Candy plays multiple roles as well, and he also plays his twin mute sister. Just, it, just terrible. Just, it's all terrible. They start this subplot of the marriage of girl John Candy and Chevy Chase. And at the same time, Demi Moore is out in the junkyard with giant, overweight, Cupid <laughs> doll hair <laughs> diaper babies. Hi, I'm Bobo. That's the little devil. Hi, we're not allowed in the house. Also, one of them was also played by Dan Aykroyd. But these giant babies that might have mental handicaps, but are also grotesque monsters, but are also blacksmiths, but are also know how to play cards, and are in love with Demi Moore, because who's not? But it is. <laughs> oh, that's it. You. Thinking about Dan Aykroyd, you know, like having this idea, like, oh, we'll have these weird mongoloid diaper babies. And having no one to say no to. Why? Or Nobody why? to say why. <laughs> why? <laughs> why, Dan Aykroyd? Why do you want big diaper babies? <laughs> He's like, oh, because that's a neat idea. <laughs> Sure, it's a need today, but Dan, you need structure. Yeah. You need you need to re, you need things to pay off and reasons for things to happen. Yeah. What? I want the diaper babies. <laughs> diaper babies can play poker with Demi Moore in a cage. <laughs> and then they're gonna build a, a watermelon <laughs> slicing machine. <laughs> And then the Digital Underground shows up. <laughs> Fucking Tupac is they in this movie. They just show up. It's like Dan Aykroyd said, and, uh, you know what? Let's have some rap people show up and we'll just have a musical number. Tupac Shakur's cinematic debut <laughs> is nothing but trouble. R.I.P. Tupac, R.I.P. No, no filter on that Dan Aykroyd, none. Oh, 
Then the judge he starts grooving with him. On and, his uh, organ. And uh, and then they 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 perform the wedding music. Yep, that's what they'll do. They'll perform the wedding music. From time to time, time to time. In her own way, she's kind of special. Isn't she? You'll never have car trouble. So then here's here's like here's like the climatic end to their ordeal. Yeah. Chevy Chase just shoves a barrel down there that explodes, then they run away. He, he blows up a bunch of gasoline tanks to save Demi Moore from a giant watermelon slicing machine run by girl John Candy uh, being tuned up by the giant ugly diaper babies. Yes. You getting all this? <laughs> And then they come back with cops. And then it turns out all of the cops are evil and in on it. Hi, Judge Allen. Evening, troopers. Can't go too far in this part of the world without running across my friends. <laughs> like all of, like all, I mean, like all of the cops, like everywhere. Hundred. There's a hundred cops. There's a hundred different cops who are in on this with the judge. Yeah. After they come back like a week later. And then uh, we get second ending. The whole place blows up because that mine that has been in everyone's background the whole time decides to erupt. And then they run away again. <laughs> and then Chevy Chase runs through a wall like a Looney Tune character. There's nothing left for us here now, so we're all planning to move in with my grandson-in-law. Oh, no. He lives in New York City. Oh, come on, what? See you soon, banker. <laughs> No, you won't. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't end so much as it like rambles and drifts off. Just like Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> like, that's Dan Aykroyd every night <laughs> drinking his skull vodka. I'll tell you, the aliens have always visited. And that's, that's nothing but trouble. This is a must see for everyone. Yeah, it's not, it's not a good movie. No. But it is an entertaining movie. It's, it's not good, and it's not so bad it's good. It is one of the weird, it, it's an anomaly. It is not well constructed, but there are things in this movie that are just fantastically creative. Mm -hmm. No, and, and the, the junkyard, even with the diaper babies, this, this family lineage where, where John Candy, John Candy girl, uh, and the diaper babies are all his grandchildren. <laughs> you know, like this family lineage, their history. It's a fantastic world. And unfortunately, the story just re is really shitty, and, shittily and told. Chevy Chase. I put a lot of the blame on Chevy Chase, too, because he's, he is just unlikable. Oh, he's a wet sack of noodles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to see him die. It's a bad sign when you want your protagonist to get caught in the death machine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no! My dad! And Dan Aykroyd never directed a film again. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, because the movie's a comedy. Is it funny? No.